COMAC's critical dependence on U.S. suppliers. Key avionics, flight control systems, and engines all sourced from American companies. The sudden halving of the C-919 jetliner's delivery schedule panicked the U.S. first. General Electric's G aerospace revenue plunged 18% in the first quarter, and even their cooperation on the previously ordered 20 C-919S was suspended, costing them a direct loss of $1 billion. This isn't a choke point for China. It's clearly shooting oneself in the foot. What's the hidden twist? The large aircraft supply chain is like the top tier recipe for a bubble tea shop. The engine is the milk cap. The flight control system is the secret syrup. And the avionics are the control station. The C919 initially chose GE's Leap 1C engine, which was like borrowing a trending milk cap to quickly gain fame. But China didn't anticipate the counter move, the agreement explicitly stated. No imitation, no modification for use on other aircraft. Effectively welding shut the recipe. The more disruptive part is that just two months after the U.S. supply cutoff, China unveiled a trump card. The domestically produced CJ-1000A engine successfully completed test flights on the C919, boasting stronger thrust than GE's and a temperature resistance of up to 1700 ring operator C. Furthermore, the C919 has already been aggressively deployed on the golden routes of Beijing-Shanghai and Shanghai-Shenzhen 4. Real-world practice. With an even higher load factor than Airbus jets. Today, we'll thoroughly dissect this grand strategy. Why did the U.S.'s supply cutoff hurt them so badly? What secret is hidden behind the double standards of the West? And how did China turn a dead end into a winning hand? I, the U.S.'s. Harming the enemy, damaging oneself. The backlash of the cutoff is brutal. Everyone thought the U.S. blocking export licenses would be a fatal blow to the C919. After all, the core components of the Leap 1C engine rely entirely on GE production. The C919's delivery target was slashed from 75 to 25 planes, and the assembly line was nearly stalled. But nobody expected that U.S. companies would be the first to buckle. CFM International, a GE and Safran joint venture, holds thousands of engine orders for the C919, valued at tens of billions of dollars, and the two-month supply cutoff directly caused GE's aerospace division revenue to plummet by 18%. More ironically, Boeing itself cannot do without China. 20% of the parts for every Boeing 787 come from China. If they truly severe ties, the losses to the U.S. aviation industry would be even greater. This isn't a technology blockade. It's a self-mutilating operation. In an era of profound globalization, the aviation supply chain has formed an intricate pattern of you are in me and I am in you. Taking the G supply cutoff as an example, this is akin to a restaurant owner impulsively driving away their core ingredient supplier, ultimately causing their own kitchen to be paralyzed by a lack of raw materials, making it impossible to sustain the menu. The U.S., attempting to use technological hegemony to choke and force China's compromise in the aviation sector, selectively ignored a crucial fact. China commands the world's largest aviation market, with the C919 holding a massive cake of 1,500 orders. For Western giants like Boeing and Airbus, the Chinese market contributes over 20% of their revenue. Losing the Chinese market would not only drastically shrink profits but also trigger a chain reaction of production line idling and tightening R&D capital chains. Data shows that the global trade volume for aerospace components reached $380 billion in 2023, with Chinese companies participating in over 60% of international cooperation projects. From wing skins to avionics systems, Made in China has long been deeply embedded in the global aviation industry chain. The U.S. is short-sighted. Lose-lose. Action not only damages the long-form supply chain ecosystem, but also plunges the global aviation industry into uncertainty. This desperate technical blockade is like a double-edged sword, simultaneously harming China's aviation development, while fragmenting the global market network on which its own survival depends, precisely exposing the fragile nature of technological hegemony that is stronger in appearance than in reality. Two. The double standard exposed, 
The Monopoly Alliance is already leaking. Don't be fooled by the idea of a unified Western technology front. Airbus's A320 supply chain is dispersed across over 30 countries globally, with China manufacturing key components like wings and cabin doors. Yet, when the C919 applied for European airworthiness certification, the process was deliberately slowed down. More damning is the fact that in 2020, the Boeing 737 MAX was grounded globally due to flight control system flaws, and it was the Chinese market that provided the crucial turning point for its return to service. Now, the U.S. is using safety as an excuse to block the C919's flight control system, supplied by Honeywell. The double standard is blatant. Even Russia couldn't stand it, extending an olive branch. The PD-14 engine performance is comparable to the Leap 1C and is available for the C919 at any time, instantly punching a large hole in the Western Monopoly Alliance. The West holds up the banner of technical standards, but, in reality, practices. Monopoly Protection Throughout the history of the aviation industry, Airbus, the biggest beneficiary of globalized procurement, built a massive industrial chain by integrating cutting-edge technologies and components from countries like the UK, France, Germany, and Italy, earning huge profits through a model of global resources from my use. However, when China C919 attempted to emulate a similar path, this so-called international rule suddenly erected a high wall. From engine certification to airworthiness standards, layers of hurdles were deliberately raised, clearly exposing the double standard. The Boeing 737 MAX safety accident once triggered a global crisis of trust, and the accommodating attitude of the Chinese market was its critical turning point in the face of survival. But as the C919 matured and began to challenge the international market structure, the West immediately turned the gun on China, using political pressure and technological barriers to try and stifle the nascent Chinese aviation industry in its cradle. This hegemonic mindset of The magistrate may set fires, but the common people are forbidden even to light lamps exposes their true intention to maintain their monopoly position. Russia's proactive offer to supply the PD-14 engine is a heavy blow that shatters the myth of unshakable Western technological hegemony. In fact, from the Soviet era's aviation legacy to Russia's recent breakthroughs in high-bypass ratio engines, its technical capabilities have always been able to compete with the West. This cooperation not only breaks the long-standing Western technological blockade but also proves that the global aviation industry is inherently a product of diverse technological integration. When certain countries attempt to maintain hegemony through a collective blockade, they actually accelerate the trend of technological multipolarity eventually sinking deeper into the mire of isolationism. Only by upholding the spirit of open cooperation and promoting the free flow of global technology can the industry achieve healthy development. 3. China's Code to Break the Deadlock Turning Dependence into a Whetstone No one anticipated that the C919's dependence was a deliberately left behind. Contingency Plan Sourcing 60% of components from Western suppliers in the early stages was partly to navigate airworthiness certification barriers, and partly to plant the seeds for domestic substitution. The CJ-1000A engine began development in 2017, successfully completed test flights on the real aircraft in 2025, boasts a thrust of 14.5 tons, stronger than the Leap 1C, and is scheduled for batch delivery in 2027. Even more impressive, Comac is playing outside the box. While others test new aircraft on remote routes, the C919 was thrust directly into the Beijing-Shanghai trunk line to collect data. After thousands of flights, its fault rate is even lower than Boeing's hard-won territory in a Western-dominated market. The domestic component rate already exceeds 50% and is projected to reach 90% by 2027 leaving the U.S. with no opportunity to maintain a choke point. Analysis Commentary This operation is a classic case of using the opponent's methods against them. Looking back at the history of China's aviation industry, after the setback of the Y-10 project, China did not abandon its large aircraft dream due to short-term frustrations. 
Facing the technical barriers constructed by Western aviation giants, China adopted a borrowing a boat to sail strategy, introducing international suppliers like G and Honeywell in the early C919 project. On the surface, this was seeking technical collaboration, but in reality, it was using the global supply chain as a training ground to secretly cultivate the technical capabilities of domestic enterprises. This is akin to ancient Chinese swordsmiths studying various forging techniques. It appeared they were learning from others' experience, but they were actually absorbing the essence before forging their own unique skills, similar to the exploration of market for technology. In China's auto industry during the reform and opening up era, the C919 team achieved a transformation from a technological learner to an overtaker in 10 years. From breakthroughs in domestic avionics systems to the independent R&D of composite fuselage components, Chinese engineers disassembled and reorganized Western technology to form an innovative system that meets their own development needs. The C919 successful commercial flight today not only signals China's break from the long-standing Boeing and Airbus duopoly but also validates the truth that key core technologies cannot be begged, bought, or negotiated for. History has long proven that China successfully detonated its first atomic bomb in 1964 despite external technological blockades. The Jiaolong submersible broke the deep-sea crude diving technology bottleneck in 2012, and now the C919 soars the skies. Dependence is not frightening. What's frightening is the lack of determination and a long-term plan to break the deadlock. The high walls built by technological hegemony will eventually collapse under the torrent of indigenous innovation. This is not only a factual portrait of China's industrial breakthrough but also a vivid example for developing countries seeking to dismantle technological monopolies. Now you should understand, the C919's delivery fluctuations are not a failure at all, but the prelude to breaking technological hegemony. From G's $1 billion loss to the successful test flight of the CJ-1000A and Russia's offer of an engine, this strategic game has already shifted toward global cooperation. Curious about the specifics of the domestic engine's technical breakthroughs? Want the latest C919 delivery data? Follow me for more in-depth, hard-hitting analysis.